Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist here. Today I wanna to do a reaction video about the topic of Accutane. This is going to be a reaction video to a popular influencer, Alex Earls, video about her personal Accutane journey. She's been on Accutane three times and she just goes over all the side effects that she experienced and her outcomes. And I wanted to react to her story in particular for a number of reasons. One, Alex Earl has been really vocal about her journey with Accutane and with acne. She shares a lot of unedited photos of her skin with acne and also showing her acne scars and you can see her before after so I think it's really brave that she's so honest and vulnerable about this. Two, she is kicking off a week-long journey about talking about Accutane on her TikTok so I think that's really admirable and so I wanted to do a reaction video to the one where she talks about her before and afters. Thirdly, she is arguably one of the biggest breakout stars on TikTok. She started getting really big at the end of last year for her getting ready with me video and her fame has just continued to build and skyrocket. And so I think it's really great to take this as an opportunity for all of us to learn a little bit more about Accutane. Before I jump into playing her video and doing the reaction, I just wanted to give a brief summary of what Accutane is. And I have a full video talking about Accutane from the past. So if you're interested and want more info, I'll link it down in the caption. So Accutane is a vitamin A pill that is designed to treat acne. Not just any type of acne, but nodulocystic acne or scarring acne. And the reason why we really reserve Accutane for more severe acne is because it does come with severe side effects. So very rarely would I ever offer Accutane as a first line treatment to a patient unless they come to my office with very, very, very severe acne to start that's already leaving scars and significantly impacting their quality of life. We will go over some of the Accutane side effects as we watch Alex's video, but because of these side effects, there's a lot of requirements for patients to even get on Accutane. For example, you have to get blood work done at baseline and with each dose change to prove that your body is not getting the side effects of Accutane that can rarely affect your liver, for example. You also, if you're a woman, need to take pregnancy tests every month to prove you're not pregnant because Accutane has some teratogenic effects, meaning it has harmful effects on a developing baby. Despite these side effects, we still use Accutane in practice because it is one of the best medications that we have for treating nodulocystic acne and the best chance we have for making your acne go away for a long time. Notice I did not say cure your acne because I don't believe that we have a cure for acne that'll make it go away forever. Especially if you have hormonal acne, even if you take Accutane, your hormonal acne will improve, but it may come back after your Accutane course. As always, you would need to talk to your dermatologist, your doctor, to see if Accutane is the right fit for you because of all of those side effects that I mentioned. Now that you have this brief primer on Accutane, and if you want to learn more, you can look at the video that's linked down in the caption. Let's head into Alex's video. Let's talk about Accutane. This was my skin a year ago today, and this is my skin now. I have been on Accutane three times now. I tried every prescription, every skincare product, and the only thing I could get to clear my skin was Accutane. So Alex's experience is not uncommon. In fact, most dermatologists will have their patients try other things in the treatment ladder for acne before jumping to Accutane because of all the things I described, because of the side effects. This is not a drug that we just give out willy-nilly like candy. Because of those serious side effects, we really need to make sure that nothing else will help and drastically improve your acne before we resort to Accutane. So in Alex Alex's case, she says she tried a bunch of other medications. And usually for me, depending on your level and severity of acne, I will usually start with topical medications like benzoyl peroxide or tretinoin or topical antibiotics for mild acne. If you have moderate acne, I might start with a combination of topical antibiotics, topical medications, plus an oral medication like oral antibiotics or oral spironolactone, which is specifically for hormonal acne. But if we try all of that and we give it a good try, meaning like two months on each each of these regimens, if nothing works and you're continuing to break out and you're continuing to get scarring, which is much harder to treat, then at that point, that's when we would have a discussion about whether or not Accutane might be the right choice for you. But for every patient, we have to weigh the risks and the benefits of Accutane and see whether the pros outweigh the cons. Studies have shown that in patients who take Accutane, about one third of them can experience a relapse after they finish their Accutane course. And patients in that relapse group may need to take a second 
second or sometimes even third course of Accutane. What affects whether or not you have a relapse? It really kind of depends on your total dosage. So we usually take your weight in kilograms multiplied by a certain number to get to your total goal dose. And then you take a pill or two every single day until you get up to that cumulative goal dose. However, if your goal dose is lower or if you have to stop the medication early due to side effects or if your doctor just puts you on a lower dose because of other reasons, then you may not get as beneficial of a treatment and you may relapse. The most common question is what are the side effects of Accutane? The side effects are obviously going to vary from person to person, but for me personally, they weren't too bad. Super, super dry lips. Like you were going to have to put Aquaphor on all the time. My hair has also thinned out while I've been on Accutane. So the number one most common complaint while on Accutane is dry skin, dry lips, dry mucous membranes. And this means you can even have dry eyes, you can get nosebleeds because the inside of your nose will be very dry, very dry mouth, and very, very dry lips. In fact, dry lips is one of the most common things I see in patients on Accutane. Definitely using tons of Vaseline and Aquaphor, I recommend using a really thick occlusive like Petrolatum to really kind of keep the moisture in your lips. The second point she mentioned is about hair loss. Now, some studies have shown that hair loss in the form of telogen effluvium is seen in Accutane. Telogen effluvium is a hair loss condition that is temporary, but it's caused when your hair gets shocked by a stressful event. It switches from being in the antigen growing phase to the telogen shedding phase. And this occurs over about three months time period. And so your hair will continue to shed and the shedding can happen up to um, a year. This shedding can happen after any type of stressful event. And I'll link a video in the caption where I talk even more about telogen effluvium in depth about it, all the different causes and what you can do about it. In the case of Accutane, the telogen effluvium happens because the Accutane itself is a big shock to your body and your system. And other studies have found that the dosage of the Accutane is what can actually worsen the shedding. So if you have a lower dose, a lower daily dose, that can actually help reduce the shedding. So that's something that you could talk to your doctor about if you are already having problems with thinning hair or already having problems with your hair falling out before you start the Accutane. This hair shedding should stop after you stop the medication, but like I mentioned, telogen effluvium can take up to even a year to really reverse and to start seeing your hair growing back. You're sensitive to the sun, but honestly for me it was manageable as long as I put like sunscreen on and stayed out like not for too long pastime I went on Accutane I think I got a little emotional at one point okay so Alex also talked about sun sensitivity which yes being on oral Accutane does make you more sensitive to the sun so I tell my patients you have to be really careful about using sun protection use your SPF at least 30 or above if you're gonna be out all day use an SPF 50 or above really use a wide brimmed hat sunglasses cover up with a UPF rash guard or long sleeve shirt if you're gonna go out hiking or be at the beach all day and avoid peak sun hours between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Now on the topic of Accutane and mood disorders, up until recently, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not this is true. Some data showed that there was a connection and some data showed that there was no connection between Accutane and depression. In the past five years, more studies have come out that have looked at larger patient cohorts internationally and across multiple different psychiatric comorbidities. And interestingly, the studies have actually found that patients' mood improves as their acne gets better. Having acne alone is an independent risk factor for developing depression. However, in these studies, researchers found that patients' moods actually got better as their acne was getting treated and they were feeling happier overall. So while more data is needed to draw a more definitive conclusion, I would say that as a dermatologist, I still screen every patient for Accutane at baseline to ask if they have a history of depression or anxiety, if they've ever seen a psychiatrist, and if they have a history of depression or anxiety, I just ask that they have a psychiatrist on board during this whole six or seven month treatment plan so that in case something happens, they have a professional that they can go to. I also screen for anxiety or depression and worsening of these symptoms at every single follow-up visit to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Just because it is a really strong drug and they want to make sure like all your levels are good. So in the past, we used to recommend blood tests every month. So at baseline and then every month that you're on the medication. That's how I was trained and that's how I practiced for the first 
first year. However, more recent data has come out suggesting that that's not really necessary. The new guidelines that have come out from recent studies, and I will link all of these studies in the caption, are that you would check at baseline to see if patients are healthy enough to go on Accutane. You would check one to two months after starting Accutane. I usually check one month after. And then with every single dosage increase, you would check again. So this can help patients have less unnecessary blood draws. Of course, the doctor has to still use his or her clinical judgment to decide whether or not a patient needs more frequent lab monitoring. For example, in someone who has a history of liver disease or who has a history of abnormalities with their white blood count or red blood count, people who have problems with their cholesterol or their triglycerides to begin with. So in anyone who has those issues or has a family history of those issues, you may want to check more frequently. However, in a healthy individual with no pre-existing medical conditions, then the new guidelines are that you no longer have to check blood work every single month, but instead at select intervals throughout treatment. For me, every time I've started Accutane, my skin gets a little bit worse at first, and then in like a month or two, it starts to clear up. Every time I've hit the three-month mark, I've seen such a huge difference. Accutane might not be for everybody, but this is just my experience with it. It can be a super tough process, and it's really annoying, but honestly, for me, it was the only thing that like has cleared my skin fully. Another question I get a lot is drinking while on Accutane. This you're gonna have to use your own judgment for. Every time I've been on it, I've been in college, so obviously I'm gonna go out with my friends. I'm having a few drinks. My doctor said that was okay as long as I got my blood done every month and everything checked out. I did notice though that I would get drunk quicker and sometimes I would even get nauseous. So I try to take it slow, listen to my body. Your doctor might give you different advice and that's okay. I don't recommend drinking on Accutane because it is a slippery slope. And the reason why we don't recommend drinking on Accutane is because this medication can cause side effects of elevating your liver enzymes. So it can cause liver damage. And that's the same reason why we say not to drink, the same reason why we say not to take too much Tylenol while you're on Accutane. It's because Tylenol and alcohol can also cause liver damage. So Alex is a college student she talks about her drinking. She says she talks to her doctor about it and her doctor says it's okay to have one or two drinks. But in my opinion, if a patient were to ask me, can they drink alcohol on Accutane? My answer would be no, because I think it's hard to quantify how much you can drink. Alex does say that she gets her blood checked every month. So if her liver were going to be damaged, they would catch it on her blood tests. But like I mentioned before, the guidelines are not such that we have to check blood tests every single month anymore. So maybe this would be an exception if you knew that your patient was drinking and damaging their liver while on Accutane, then yes, that person would probably need their liver checked every single month. But all of that being said, talk to your doctor about it. But in general, we do not recommend drinking while on Accutane. So why have I been on Accutane three times? The first time I was on it, I was like four or five months in and my skin was completely cleared. So I didn't think that I had to finish it. And I was like, I kind of want to just get off of it. When in reality, I should have just waited the whole like six or seven months and finished it through. So it came back the second time I did it the full time. I was good and then I got a boob job and I went off my birth control and I think that like completely messed up my hormonal imbalance. My testosterone levels were super high, so that's when I went on a third time. Sharing these photos of my skin is not easy, but the amount of support I've gotten from you guys means the world. Acne is normal. I love you guys. Bye. So Alex shares that she went on it three times. The first time her skin was totally clear, but she had stopped the treatment early. The second time she went through some significant changes in her body. She had breast implants and she also went off birth control. And she says that her testosterone was very high. And then this is the third time that we're seeing her on Accutane and her skin looks really great now. You definitely don't wanna stop your Accutane course too early. Like I mentioned before, we usually calculate a goal dose. We take your weight times a certain number and that equals your goal cumulative dose. So every time I see a patient, I add up how much they've taken so far and we're working towards that gold dose. But if you stop too early, there's a higher chance that you're gonna relapse. Studies have shown that. So you really wanna finish out the full course. Usually I like to see my patients on it until they reach their full dose and until they haven't had any breakouts for at least two months, not even one pimple. So that's how I would say a patient is ready to come off of Accutane. They have to meet both of those criteria. Her second time, she mentions that she had some big life changes. She underwent went surgery, she went off of her birth control, and that her testosterone was high. Now, I'm not Alex's doctor, obviously, so, and I don't know her personal medical history or her medical information or lab tests or anything, but I'm just guessing that she might have a component of hormonal acne as well. And like I also mentioned before, if you have hormonal acne, Accutane is not likely to cure your acne. Accutane will improve it, but once you're off the Accutane, there is a chance that your hormonal acne will come back because Accutane is not treating and getting at the cause of the hormonal 
hormonal acne, which is elevated testosterone. So there is a chance that with hormonal acne, you will still need a touch of medication after coming off of the Accutane, whether that's in the form of topicals or oral spironolactone. Overall, I think it is so brave and wonderful of Alex to share about her journey. And I think a lot of what she mentioned is really great information and gives me an opportunity to educate about Accutane. Thank you to Alex for making this informative video about her journey. And I hope you found this video informative as well. As usual, please comment below with any questions. I'll link a couple other videos I've done, reaction videos, info videos on Accutane. And let me know if you have any other topics you want me to discuss in upcoming videos. Don't forget to comment, like, or subscribe, most importantly, so that you don't miss new videos from me. Take care until next time.